A spinal cord injury, of course, can be devastating. Adapting to your physical changes can be a long and arduous process. The injury and the road that follows can take a toll on a person's mental health as well. Swati Mehta is a postdoctoral student at the University of Regina who wants to help, and she joins me in our Regina studio. Good morning. Good morning, Sheila. What drew you, first of all, to this area of work? Well, I started um, doing spinal cord injury about eight years ago when I joined as a coordinator at uh, Parkwood Hospital in London, Ontario. And during that time, I worked with stroke, uh, brain injury, and spinal cord injury research. Uh, But I got involved with Rick Hansen, um, Man in Motion, fundraising activities there. And what we did was every year we had an annual event where we had people with spinal cord injuries and their family and the community come in and do, you know, um, obstacle courses and like things like wheelchair basketball and fun activities to help raise funds for research and people with spinal cord injury. And I really got um, connected to people with spinal cord injury and just um, enjoyed their company. I felt they were a very passionate and uh, fun-loving group, so I really connected to them. What did you learn about the toll that a spinal cord injury can take on a, on a person's mental health? I think um, a lot of us can uh, understand the physical aspects of a spinal cord injury because you might see that um, outright, but mental health is very different for them just because their bodies are changing and it affects, you know, how they can interact with people, how they can function in the world. And um, one of these individuals um, I remember was uh, a father of three uh, kids and, you know, he's been married for a while and had a spinal cord injury. And now he had a lot of bladder and bowel issues. um, So he might have an accident, you know, when he was in public. Public. So those kinds of thoughts uh, really affected him. And he mentioned, you know, he would try to keep himself constipated so he didn't have an accident. Aww. And then, you know, he wouldn't be able to go out in public. And that way he felt isolated, not from only from his friends, but he wasn't able to join his family at family events and things like that and started to kind of feel depressed about not being able to have fun with his kids and wife as much as he used to. So those kinds of thoughts can, you know, be very hurtful for people um, and don't allow them to, you know, have a proper quality of life. Yeah, that it they changes can. how you see yourself, yeah. and but it also changes how you are in relationship to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some other issues that are specific to people with spinal cord injuries? So a lot of them um, not only are bowel and platter, but it could be body image. So another individual, um, I remember, um, he's a young person. Um, He wanted to go into college, and um, he was 21, but had um, an accident and became uh, spinal cord injured. And he now no longer wants to go to university because he doesn't know, you know, what he can offer as much as he used to before. He also feels that he can't go outside because, you know, people are always watching him. Um, he talked about, you know, when he goes shopping, a lot of the customer service people will talk to his parents, but kind of in- ignore him and he feels invisible. So he som- sometimes doesn't go out. So just that feeling of, you know, body consciousness mm. um, and not feeling motivated to achieve some of the goals that they could have before their life So is this something that we haven't, as a society, paid enough attention to, that we've paid attention to the physical changes, but not to the, to the, what you're going through mentally, emotionally? I think so. And I think it's more just awareness. Like not a lot of people talk about it. Sometimes people might feel uncomfortable asking, you know, might feel stigmatized. So I think if we're a little bit more open and have a proper discussion, Um, with individuals, I think that can help um, them kind of through their recovery process. And you're just starting a new chapter in your work, which is why we why we brought you in here, because you're looking for people who might like to be a part of it. What are you doing? So we at the online uh, therapy user group at the University of Regina have an um, online cognitive behavioral therapy program for people with spinal cord injury. And this is by Dr. Uh, Heather Hedgestopoulos. And she's been doing this for about uh, 10 years. She's been doing uh, studies with people 
people with fibromyalgia, cancer, cardiac patients. And now I'm here adapting her program for people with uh, spinal cord injury. And um, you can go to the website, www.onlinetherapyuser.ca. And if you or someone you know has a spinal cord injury, they can apply for the program. It's a free program that offers an eight-week uh, guided therapy for people with spinal cord injury. And it helps with, you know, um, some of the maladaptive thoughts and behaviors that they might be experiencing. And we're trying to get uh, not only people with spinal cord injury, but also their caregivers involved um, and help Because they're going through their changes yeah, too, Yeah, so there's right? a lot of caregiver burden involved with that. So we're trying to get their perspective on how the injury has changed their lives as well. And I guess the beauty of online is you can just stay home, you know, even, right. even in rural and remote areas, yeah. right? And it is guided, so they get weekly telephone calls from therapists. Um, and it's a free service, and it's Canada-wide. Yeah, and you'll be using that then to to further your studies? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in and telling us okay. about it. Thank you so much. Swati Mehta is a postdoctoral student at the University of Regina. And just a note, she did recently receive a national award for her work from the Royal Society of Canada.